All right. Ready? I'm sorry, Abby. Hey guys, it's Grace and Diana, and we're gonna recap the books we read in 2023. Well, how many books did you read this year? So I read 17. Okay. I don't actually know your total. I don't really know my total either. I was trying to count them all up, and I kept feeling like I was missing some. And I'm sure I am. They just weren't memorable enough. To <laughs> I've done my best to uh, recap, and I read 28 books, <laughs> which is a lot, considering yeah. I, like, wasn't reading at all, like, two years ago. So, yeah, I've averaged the last three years. 20 books mm -hmm. a year and before 2020 I wasn't reading so do you want to know something too what which maybe this is just an ad for Goodreads which it isn't <laughs> because not sponsored Goodreads does kind of suck like the just the layout it's not it's very just good not pretty I'm pretty sure I can tell you how many pages I've read that's a lot of pages I read 7,000 pages. Exactly. 7,013. Okay. Oh, that's pretty close. Um, the shortest book I read was 224 pages. Mm -hmm. The longest was 757, which was the last book I read. Uh -huh. And the average book length in 2023 that I read was 412 pages. Wow. That's My average. Nice my average rating for 2023 was a 3.7, which when we go through uh, the breakout, yeah. you'll see. Yeah. And then I'll put in here that little image. Oh, yes. That's cute. I think it's so that's pretty. That's so cute. All my co like, covers are so colorful and yes. like, fun. Until you get to um, a quarter of yes. Black. Um, so here's my recap. I read, so again, 17 books. I didn't give any a one star. Oh. I also didn't DNF or did not finish any books, which mm -hmm. I know you did. Yeah. I, know I did. I gave one book two stars. And I'm really sad because it was from an author that I read in 2020, one of like the first books I read when I started reading again. Mm -hmm. And I really liked that book. But this one, The Antidote for Everything, was just not it. It's this one. It's like a health book. Oh, kind of, yeah. Not even a health book. It's about doctors. This series is about doctors. Mm -hmm. But I had read a different book from this author, The Queen of Hearts by Kimmery Martin. I don't know that book at all. I really liked it. Again, another, like, heart, uh -huh, you know, health. Yes. Um, but... This one was not it. The antidote for everything was not it. Mm -hmm. um, three stars. I gave seven books three stars, which is 40% of what I've read. And, like, I feel like that's Average. decent. Yeah. I feel like I'm not easily wowed, mm -hmm. you know? Mm -hmm. But four stars, I gave four books, which was 22%. And in here I have one actar one mystery, two mystery thrillers, and a romance in Chestnut Springs. So that feels good because it's different. Mm -hmm. It's not all romance, you mm -hmm. know. Five stars. I had five books that got five stars, so 28%. Oh my gosh. So basically, half and half. Yeah. So half were two and three, and half were four and five, which feels really good. Uh-huh. Yeah, I mean, three out of the five five stars were Akatar. Mm -hmm. That's interesting because I did not, I have yet to give a book a, because a, I read out of 10, which is hard because on, on Goodreads it's only like a five star review. And you can't put points. Yeah. Like you can't put like a 3.5. Yeah. Which I recapped this year out of 10 and I did give some point fives, And I only have, I didn't give a single book a 10 out of 10 rating. Did you give any a one? Uh, no. The closest I got was a five. Two, I put at five. Three, I put at five. Sorry. I'm sorry. 
Your lowest rating is a five out of ten. So the the thing with that is, what I was gonna tell you is, if you ever put them into Goodreads, you could just divide by two. Yes. But a five divided by two is gonna be a two point five. Mm -hmm. So you're either gonna have to bite the bullet and view a two or a three. Yeah. Okay. Most of them would be be a two. With these. So ones. then you're similar to me. Yeah. You had two fives. I had three fives. So, and I had two twos. Mm -hmm. No, one two. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, my fives um, were, and Which I like again, to read. Five is her low. Yeah, five is my low. Um, and I like to read in like series. So, like, you broke some up, mm -hmm. and I like felt the need that I had to read the entire series before in I moved one on setting. To, yeah. To the next. So, I, the first book I gave a 5 out of 10 was by Tessa Bailey, Tools of Engagement. I just, it was like a, um, an age gap romance. Where the not your was, thing? No, not so much. It wasn't so much that. It was the boy was younger than the girl, and he had a niece that he was taking care of. I don't know, it was, it just felt very, like, meh. Yeah. So, um... That was a 5 out of 10, and then I gave a Christina Lauren, The Soulmate Equation, a 5 out of 10. Um, I was really excited for it. I heard a lot of really good things about it, and it just didn't hit. Yeah. So, I wasn't happy about that. And then the last one I gave, a 5 out of 10, was I read, I reread the Chronicles of Narnia series. I say reread. I read like half of them in high school and then I stopped and so then I reread the ones that I did read and then finished the series. Um, and Prince Caspian is my least favorite out of and those. What number is it? That is the fourth book in that series. Which a lot of people like that one. Oh, I'm sorry. So I gave Prince Caspian and Voyage of the Drawn Treader five out of tens. So I didn't like either of those books. Were those rereads or the books you had to finish? So I never finished Voyage of the Dawn Treader in high school because I was I got bored with it. And um, so Prince Caspian was a reread, and I don't remember reading it in high school and like liking mm -hmm. it. And that's probably also because there are movies of those two. Yeah. Prince Caspian the movie was really good. Nothing like the book, like at all like the book. And I loved the movies growing up. I hated The Voyage of the Dawn Treader growing up, but I also didn't like the book. I felt like a lot of C.S. Lewis's books, I feel like, are really drawn out. And then within the last mm. chapter, like, everything happens. And so, yeah. except for the last book that I read in this series. So, but those were my least favorites. My highest rating, I gave books were a 9.5 and I only gave I only gave two books a 9.5 out of 10. What are they? Uh, a Court of Mist and Fury. So the second book in the Akatar series. Okay. And then um, Romancing Mr. Bridgerton I gave a 9 out of a 9.5 out of 10. Which so, is by uh, Julia Quinn and that's in the Bridgerton series. Which actually that one I have that's the no, I think I read another one. I for not this year, like a while ago when Bridgerton like just came out. I had read, I think the first one, so Anthony's book. But this one is, I was really excited to read because it's the next season coming up. So it was I really gave good. Akatar number two four stars. Which, if you did a nine point five, you're at a, like a four point seven five. So so I we're not probably, far off. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So Court of Mist and Fury. I did give a lot of I I did give quite a few books a nine out of ten. Yeah. Um. So I gave so A Court of Mist and Fury was the highest out of the Akatar that I gave. Which one is that number? That's number two. Okay. Um. And then I gave. Let's see. I gave Reckless in the Chestnut Spring series by Elsie Silver a nine out of ten. And then I gave The Last Battle in the um. Uh, Chronicles of Narnia series, uh, 9 out of 10. So we're going to kind of popcorn back and forth and give like a brief, like, 
The history? No. A, a brief overview. little, yeah, overview. Explanation of the book. Can tell you if you think, if we think you should read it or not. Kind of a thing. Yeah. So this one, which, if we want to talk about it together. Mm -hmm. From my three stars, the first one is Flawless. Okay. Do I think you should read it? Yeah. This is the Chestnut Spring series. It's small town romance. It's like a group of family and it goes through the different brothers and then some of the other family members in there. Um, if you like cowboys, military men, single fathers, like <laughs> there's a lot of tropes that can be found with yeah. in this series. series. And technically you can read them as standalones in a series. Mm -hmm. Um, do you have a spice level for flawless? I do have a spice level for flawless. So I, so what's funny is I did do spice level out of five. Oh my god. So I do, I did the little emojis. I, I used the pepper, but I thought it was really funny because some of the books I read were considered romance, but there were not spice in it at all. Yeah. So I gave them the ginger, the ginger emoji. Because ginger is a spice. It is. I thought it was funny. <laughs> uh, so, anyways, my spice level is out of five. And I gave the flawless a two out of five. Spice. Eight. And flawless is the, the first, first one. Mm -hmm. And I think we've talked about it. I think we've talked about it and you thought I would like flawless more than if we want to just jump to heartless. Because mm -hmm. those are the only two in that series I've read. Mm -hmm. um, which heartless I gave four stars. Again, read it. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know. Like looking back, I'm like, I don't know. Was Flawless better than Heartless? Did you, what did you? I thought that Heartless was better than Flawless, but it's also hard for me because I'm also rating these. I'm not rating it right after I read it. I'm I'm rating it as like in the series, which one I thought was the best out of the series, as opposed to as an individual as a book. So. I, that's my, Heartless is my second highest rating out of that series. And thinking about it too, like, maybe it's harder being the first book in the series, mm -hmm. like setting up, this is obviously not like a fairy tale like world, you don't mm -hmm. have to set up that, but setting up like the dynamics yep. and like the town and the vibe. And then when you go to the second one, you're like going back to something like comfortable and like something you know, you mm -hmm. know? Um, but yeah, I would definitely, Flawless I give three stars, Heartless I give four. So you I did like them. Heartless better than Flawless. When I rated them, yeah. Wow. But I don't know, like, if I could put a point two five, a point seven five, like, would I be different mm -hmm. kind mm -hmm. of a thing? Yeah. But yeah. All I right. Um, that series is one I would definitely yeah. recommend to somebody. It's really, really good. And I don't think it's too... I don't think it's too spicy. Oh no, and it's the most I gave was so heartless and reckless. I gave a a three spice out of five. Yeah. So, so like if you're like you already like romance, but you're entering your smut era, that's a good starting. I mean, book. I shared it with my grandma. So. That's true. Although I feel like sometimes grandma reads she needs more, more smut than us. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I was really disappointed with the last book, honestly, which is tricky because it's a military romance and if any of you know my situation my husband's in the military and I guess part of it I could see from like a military wife's perspective because a lot of people on TikTok were like why would this even happen and so I do understand some of that but I was sad to see like oh like this is how it ends eh. Don't which spoil I know I'm sorry uh, it's still a good book. Like, it's still I'm gonna fun. Read it. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I still recommend it to anybody. Read the whole series. Um, but like the, like you said about the first books of the series, I feel like the last books of the series have like a heavy weight on their shoulders. Yeah. Cause you're closing an entire chapter. Yeah. And so anyways, I was going to talk about the Never King series by Nikki St. Crow, which is, is this the Peter Pan when retelling? We... Yes. Which is, I... <laughs> I need to add it to my Goodreads on like my want to read. Uh -huh. What is it called again? So this is, this is the Never King series by Nikki St. Crow. 
there's four books I've only read three but the last book just came out this year um or not this last year yeah Anyways, um and those books have quite a bit of spice I'm afraid what's the spice level the Never King I gave a four um spice out of five is Vicious Darling the one I'm thinking of that you told me things? Um, I don't, I don't know. With the Lost Boys? They're all there in every book. <laughs> but which one has so many in the Lost Boys? All of them! No, but I'm like, didn't they like something? In all of them they do. <laughs> in all of these books. All of these books are considered re harems, so. Anyways. deep breaths. Am deep I deep going breaths. to? I don't know. Probably, probably not. Honestly, probably. <laughs> just so I can understand your mind. <laughs> that is a pretty good spicy book. It's also a little dark. It's on the darker side. Um, which I like. I like the darker romance books. Yeah. So I've read, I've read a few. So anyways, that series I would for sure recommend. I also just, one of the last books I just read was Icebreaker by Hannah Grace. It's like super big on TikTok. Does it have a blue cover? It's the hockey player and the ice, ice skater. And the ice skater. So Did the you like figure it? skater. I liked it. I thought it was good. I did yeah. see a lot of people were saying like, it's a long book. Like something was happening throughout, but I was like, oh my gosh, when is this like gonna end? Like 435 pages. Yeah. It was, it's a, it's a big book, but I did give that one a spice level of four. Although it's not very dark, there's just a lot of sex. Yeah. There's lots of it. So, that one was good. I just got into, um, this series by Emily, or not a series so much, it's just like a collection, mm -hmm. her collection of books, by Emily McIntyre, and it's retellings of fairy tales mostly Disney stories where like almost all of them the villain ends up with the main love interest um and so I read the Aladdin retelling uh, and it's called Twisted I gave the book itself a six out of ten which would be equivalent to a three three yeah um and then I gave the spice level a three out of five so uh it was it was a pretty good book yeah. Um, I'm really excited. She just came out with, um, one, and it's, oh gosh, I forget what it's called, but, um, it's a Hunchback of Notre Dame retelling, <sighs> and I have a, the, a chokehold that the Hunchback of Notre Dame has on me is, is it what's his face? Insane. Judge Claude Frollo. Yep. Like, Freaking something's wrong. wrong with you. <laughs> I've always had a, um, inappropriate <laughs> mindset when it comes to the Hunchback of Notre Dame. Yeah. Yeah. Um. She needs therapy. I, I need a priest. <laughs> I'll take over now <laughs> with two books I wouldn't recommend. Oh, okay. And I feel awful saying these, but I'm glad my mom died, but Jeanette McCurdy oh. and Embrace Your Almost, which I gave to you. And I didn't read. You didn't read. And I gave to you because I think you would like it. Like it was, I, I don't know, like it was just not for me, you know, it just was kind of like, I put something like it was too soft for me. Mm -hmm. Whereas like, I think you can enjoy that. Whereas I'm like, no, yell at me. Like, tell me I'm doing something wrong. You know? I don't know. It was just like, not my favorite. The Jeanette McCurdy book. Like, I feel bad saying it, but I, I wanted more. Like she could have spilled tea. And I don't know, like some of my friends and I, cause I read it for work. Um, some of my friends and I were saying like, Maybe she can't say everything. Maybe there's going to be another book. Maybe there's going to be a show. Like, maybe there's something 
coming and mm -hmm. this was just the like foot in the door um for me I couldn't I couldn't do it I'd like to touch on that book because I've seen a lot about it I have yet to read it I would like to but it also kind of scares me only because she was raised Mormon she barely talks about it she barely talks about it she just talks about like like literally maybe one chapter kind of being like yeah we would go it would take a long time but as soon as I got famous we didn't go like that was kind yeah. of like it okay she doesn't like critique or like say anything mm -hmm. oh that's good yes yeah. I have another one for different reasons I wouldn't recommend and this one too much sex Just no kidding. this one I would more so like the other two I could find people that would I would mm -hmm. suggest them to. Mm -hmm. This one I don't know who I would suggest to. Not because it was bad, but because it stressed me out so much. So it's called The Measure. Okay. Concept is one day everyone wakes up and if you're, I believe, 22 and older, you've received a box. Inside the box is a string that cor correlates that's the word correlates. I'm thinking of correlates the length of your life so hmm. then you have to decide are you going to open the box and know how long you live or not look and just kind of like live your life yeah so it's kind of this like short stringers who know they're going to die short stringers literally there's like alcoholics anonymous like classes <gasps> for short stringers. short stringers and then there's long stringers and like to the point where like even if a long stringer tried to die, they wouldn't. Hmm. And it opens, again, this was a book that I read for my, like, works book club. Wasn't my choice. Wasn't mm, my choice. That's why I was like, where um, the hell did you yeah. find this book? And I've seen it. Like, it was a popular book. And, like, I had heard a lot about it. But I, and it wasn't. Mm -hmm. It starts. And I kid you not, I was getting anxious in, like, flashbacks of the pandemic. Oh, my gosh. Because everyone, like, all of the, um, the first few chapters, pages, whatever, is reminiscent of when the pandemic, pandemic started. And they're, like, unprecedented times. This is crazy. Like, this phenomena. Blah, 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 blah. I got so anxious. I don't want anyone to have to go through the anxiety that I did. Like, it was just so... And it's not a big book. So to be that, like, overwhelmed mm -hmm. by it... 353. It was just too much. <laughs> it was too heavy. Too much on my mind. It was too much. I have two that I wouldn't recommend to people. Yeah. Um, so I have talked about one, or they're both my lower ratings, so, or two of them. So The Tools of Engagement by Tessa Bailey, I lightly brush on that. I would not recommend that to anyone. I felt like it was just not good. Yeah. Um, and she does have another book that I really liked, um, called My Killer Vacation. That one was great. So it's not necessarily, like, the author, yeah. but, like, I don't know, that book was just not it. Uh, and then The Soulmate Equation by Christina Lauren, which this is two authors. Yes. Two female authors write th this book. And this one I had found on TikTok and I was really excited about it. And it just like fell flat for me. It was like, which also this book kind of stressed me out too. The premise of it is there's this up and coming like business where you can like send in your DNA samples to see who your soulmate is and like how compatible you are and so all these people are sending in their samples mm -hmm. and then some like couples yeah. will send in their samples and see that their compatibility no. is not good and instantly I was like oh my god that'd be me what if it's me yeah like and you think they have this wonderful relationship and it's not because this business tells you that you're not compatible. Yeah. Um, so that one stressed me out a bit. So 
I would not recommend that one to people. I have three that I don't think most people have heard of or most people would know kind of a thing. Because mm -hmm. the only other one I have on here is Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo. Oh, everyone, everyone knows, knows that. It's great. I gave it five stars. But the other three that I would say you should read that you might not have heard of are Everyone in My Family Has Killed Someone, My Sister the Serial Killer, and One Italian Summer. Which you tried to get me to read One Italian Summer, and I didn't read it. So. I love it. So, <laughs> everyone in my family has killed someone. Also, read it right now. Like, pause, read. Because everyone on this, on this train is a suspect, which is book number two in the series, comes out this year. Oh. So, everyone in my family has killed someone is a whodunit mystery mm. keeps you on the edge of your toes small enough and like keeps you on the edge of your toes yeah <laughs> it just like it's good <laughs> it's so it's just so good because it's lighthearted yet serious mm -hmm. and funny and the author is just like well i say author because the main character is an author mm. So he is kind of like writing this story, something happens, and now you're like hearing it. But he's just so honest. It was just really good. Um, so I'm really excited for the next one that I'll read this year. Mm -hmm. My Sister the Serial Killer was different than anything I've read. It's written by... A serial killer. No, <laughs> the serial killer's sister. Oh, oh. So My Sister the Serial Killer takes place in Nigeria. And there's a lot of words, terms, even like she'll say things that they're wearing and I had to look it up, you know? Oh, okay. Um, it's almost written in like short letters style. So like a chapter is, you know, three pages. So you can kind of read it really quickly. It's handheld small. Obviously all books are handheld, but like it's small kind of like as if it was like a journal kind of a thing. It's just so good. Read it. Because basically the sister kills her partners. And through the book we kind of try and decide if it's on purpose or not. That one, read it. So good. The last one, One Italian Summer. So good. This author I read her first book. I don't know if it's actually her first book, but the first book I read from her, I read in 2020, which was in five years time, I believe. Both of them have similar styles where you kind of go back in time slash, is it real or is it just a dream kind of a thing? Sure. Kind of serious topics. But I think they're really beautiful and I think you can learn a lot about yourself in them because you kind of question like would I react like that would mm -hmm. I be questioning that I think they're beautiful and I love them I think out of out of all of these the problem is you're you have a lot that I I've never heard of and you, I think the only one that most people wouldn't know is the Never King series because you read a lot so. of like popular yeah, book talk books yeah so i do i do have a lot of books on my kindle that i've gotten for the stuff your kindle, kindle day which if you don't know about stuff your kindle day and you have a kindle or even just the kindle app on your yeah. phone it is incredible all of these authors put their books up for free for free not kindle unlimited for free downloads and you can download as many books as you want they do it like three or four times a year yeah I have so many books that I need to read from them so do you want to talk about Akatar briefly I think so now that I'm so context I started Akatar before me before you but I also started it technically I think in 2022 like the end of oh. 2022 and finished it beginning of 2023. Okay. 
the first book took me months. <laughs> picked it up, put it down, picked it up, put it mm -hmm. down. Then throughout 2023, I read the other four. Mm -hmm. um, love. Mm -hmm. You picked them up after me and read them within all five within six months. Yep, just about. I finished the last book just a few days ago. <laughs> yeah, I think Thursday and today's Monday. Mm -hmm. And we haven't really talked about it. Mm -hmm. <sighs> Let me see. So the Akatar series is five books and they revolve around so this... far. Right? Yeah. There will be more. There will be more. Thank God. God, because Literally. my, I need, I need more of Asriel. Yeah. So bad. Um, so it revolves around, most of the series had revolved around this one, uh, main female character. And then, um, as the books go on, it starts, uh, going into different, like her sisters. Um, so, um, the first three were all about Feyre. How do you say her name? Because Feyre. Feyre, okay. Because there's a lot of controversy about how yeah. you say names, and I go based on the audio, the audiobook of how they read the names. So, how do you how do you read most of these names? So it's hard to because if read it, if you haven't read it and you want to read it, skip. If you've read it and you want to talk about it, stay. If you don't want to read it. And you care, stay. So skip now if mm -hmm. you don't want spoilers. Yes. Farah, Tamlin. Yep. I used to say Rysand. Mm -hmm. And I would Rice, I guess. But then I changed it to Resand. Yes. And Reese. Yes. Thank God. I know. Nesta, Elaine, mm -hmm. um, Cassian, Azriel, Moore, Morrigan, Amran. That's pretty much yeah. it. Yeah. Okay. Good. Just wanted to make sure that we were all understanding that Reese is Reese and not Rice. So. Yeah. And like, because I don't listen. I don't listen to any books. At all. I would say I'm 50-50. I will read some books and I will do audiobooks. Um, and with these, most of them except for the last one, I read with the app called Graphic Audio. If you like listening to audiobooks, I highly recommend that series, that um, app, because the way that they're done, uh, they're they're like um, motto for their app is called like a movie for your ears, and so like say someone's walking through the woods, you'll hear like birds chirping in the background as like the um, narrator is like reading. Or like their feet crunching on I don't like know. The, oh I love it I I'll love it it's like a, it. it's like a a book yeah or, or a movie so it's like a book mm. uh, so anyways so the first book a quarter of Florence and Roses I like you it took me a it it was so hard to get through most of the book yeah you just have to push yep. Yeah. Because the other ones are so worth it. Yes. I still gave that one a four. I gave that one a... Yeah, it would be a... Did you give it an eight? It would have been a four. No, I gave it a 7.5 out of yeah. 10. So, yeah. The second one, I gave a four as well. I loved the second book. Who do you think you're most like in the sisters? Elaine. Elaine. Okay. Yeah. I think I'm Nesta. Mm-hmm. The third book, which is funny, I actually put, I give it a five. I give the third book a five. And my, I don't usually give reviews on Goodreads, but I put powerful and beautifully written. So far my favorite in the series, which I don't a know if it's change. changed. I don't know if it's changed. Oh, you don't know if it's changed. Now, cause I, I didn't know. I, I don't, I didn't remember. I liked the third one so much. But since I wrote that, I'm like, huh? Yep. The third one is really good. I do I do enjoy the third one. Um, as a book in and of itself, it's it's really good. Um, 
which I, I didn't brush on, but um, I also gave spice ratings for these because they are a, the the tiniest bit spicy. So like the first book I gave a one one spice rating, the second book I gave two, and the third one I gave one. So it just the, the slightest bit. Yeah, there wasn't much. So, um, but yeah, the, the third book was really good. Um, how did you feel going from a court of, of rings and ruin? to a course a court of frost and starlight so i gave it a three okay it just didn't feel like the quality didn't match what i had read mm -hmm. was it enjoyable was am i glad i had it all of that yeah yeah you need to so i think what was so hard about it is the author went from doing point of view um writing single point of view single yeah, to, to multi, because in one, two, and three, you're only hearing from Feyre. Yes, you're only in the mind of her, and then in they call it three point five, the like novella, the Christmas special, whatever you want to call it. Each chapter is someone new. Yes, some people will skip that book, and I don't understand how you can skip it. No, I don't get that. No. Don't skip. Don't skip it. Just push through. It's the. It's so short. You're. Why would you skip? A almost three hundred page book. Like it's. I think it's like two fifty ish. Yeah. To go to an almost eight hundred page book. Like yeah. Just read the extra two hundred. Mm -hmm. So, book number four. Mm -hmm. You get a. If we. If I convert had, to it's hard. five stars. Yeah. You gave it a four. I gave it a four because then I'd give the Court of Mist and Fury a five out of ten. I gave a it a five, five out of ten. Five out of five. Yes, I give it a five mm -hmm. out of five. Mm -hmm. <laughs> she gets a lot more. She gets a lot more spicier in this book. The author, yeah, yeah, the, the author does. Yeah, it's good. It's and really good. I think I don't. <sighs> Should cry. <laughs> no, I'm trying to decide if I liked. Four better than three, mm. and I, I really do think I liked four better than three. Do I think Can I like clarify it? you like five better than three? There's five books in the series. They count um, the small one, three point five. Oh, sounds I know, stupid. I know. Or... So when I have it on um, court of on Goodreads. Yeah. That's oh, so it off. does a three point five literally book, but it won't let you do yes. a point five yes. rating. Um, Whatever. I think I like four better than three. I wouldn't say by a full point, mm -hmm. and for different reasons. Three is so action packed. So much yes. happens. You learn so much. The characters are changing. Blah blah blah. Whereas. In four, you're really focused on a smaller group. Yes, all of them are in there, cool, great, whatever, but you're really focused on one person, mm -hmm. and then everyone else is kind of like the triangle down, like pyramid, you know, yeah. hierarchy. Mm -hmm. I think I really liked it too because I connected with her. I did write one quote, and I don't write quotes, so that means it was like huge yeah. for me. I wrote up, I wrote up, I wrote up. I wrote, you don't have to give up one thing to be the other. And I don't, I, it was early on in the book when she said that, but I think I just connected with her so much that the book was just like that much better. Like, yeah, it took me two months to go for an 800 page, almost 800 page book. But I do think if I had to choose, I think I would say four mm -hmm. was better than three for me. Yeah. It's a good book. It's a really good book. I... What did you think of the, um... Why can't I think of the three girls? What did you think of their them as, like, a dynamic? I liked them. Mm -hmm. Maybe I'm also a little more sensitive for, like, women's stories. That, for me, seeing her find her strength in herself and in her like female friendships 
was so much more powerful. I don't know, like, it was just so sweet, so genuine. Like, the whole thing with their bracelets, binding them to each other, that was so, like, you know? Mm -hmm. And I loved that Cassian, like, shut the f up and let her do her. <laughs> figure out her <laughs> shit you know let her figure yeah. out her shit and then came back and it wasn't like yeah you really f***ed up while I was waiting over here for you it was like no like I let you do what you needed to do and if you needed me I was there but like you you can be you know your own person mm -hmm. and I think that was just like so good for me mm -hmm. like I just connected with it and like ugh. I think out of the two, which is hard because so far I I really like Azriel, but I don't yes. know enough about him to because like, who knows who he could go with. It's so true. I'm so because oh, he could go with what's her face, Gwen? No, is it Gwen or the other one? There is a Gwen. No, one of the priestesses. He uh, they would catch glances. It's Gwen. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, because the other one is um, Emery, and she has the wings. Yes. I don't know. I thought Elaine, but I, I know. think it would. Be, personally, I don't. So. I, don't uh, I don't think that he's gonna end up with Elaine because I think that's so typical. Like the three main boys end up with the three main girls, and I think it'll give a really good character arc to, um, oh, I can't think of his name. Uh, her mate, or her her mate, Elaine's mate. Uh, oh, Lucian? Uh, Lucian, yeah. Uh, I think it would give him a really good character arc. Um, I th I do. I think the relationship with Elaine and Asriel is is fine, but um, yeah. But also, Asriel saved Gwen. He was the one that brought her back. So I I would hope that's who he ends up with. I know. Personally, I don't. Uh, but it'll be interesting to see what the next book is, is there going a to be a, no is there a year no nope. not that i know of i've been waiting i've been waiting if i had to choose just between how much i know about reese and cassian cassian i'd choose cassian so because i feel like reese is um i think if you would i mean you learned so much about cassian in the last book uh-huh because i was gonna say i think if you asked me earlier like i would choose Reese. Reese? Yeah. But I don't know, like, I have, I think when, whenever, at some point when Sarah's like, here you go, mm -hmm. I could be smitten by Lucien, too. Oh, yeah. I mean, let's, honestly, I could be smitten by any of them. I mean, Tamlin fooled me, so. Oh! Yeah. Which is really funny, because I think regardless of what's going to happen, I think I'm going to choose Azrael out of all of yeah. them. But what's funny is I think that Roger's most, like... Uh, Cassian. Who, Who do I think, think is that Paul's most like? I, I would say from the people we know so far, enough of. I'm leaning towards Cassian. But again, I think he could be Lucian. Mm -hmm. He's not Azrael. No. And I don't think he's Reese. No. I think he, like, I mean, I guess Lucian's a little more um put together posh like Cassian's not and I think that's mm -hmm. more Paul like he's yeah. a little more playful a little more he can miss his words but he's also a little like um attitude kind of like okay yeah go ahead and do yeah. all that you know uh -huh. um so I don't know once we have all the books yeah I think that Roger's gonna be most like Cassian yeah. I don't think he's gonna be anything like Asriel yeah yeah, so that was our that was our recap. Do you have any um like goals for books this upcoming year? I don't know. I haven't done my 2024 like what what I want to read kind of a thing. I'm going to stick to around 20 to 24. Usually I'll put 24 as kind of like a push. Mm -hmm. Um there's definitely a list of books that I want to read. I think I'm most excited for everyone in this train as a suspect. Mm -hmm. And then like, that's like the new release that I'm like looking forward to. Well, I want to read a Colleen Hoover, you know, oh, there's you a book. You should read Ugly Love. I want to read It Ends With Us. 
I can give you, oh, we already talked about I this. I have it but. waiting for me at the library, I think. Yep, so, all right, that was, um, that's it. That's, that's the books. Mm -hmm. That's our books. Um, let us know what you read. Mm -hmm. And don't fight us in the comments if we rated something you loved really low, because we're all entitled opinions. to our own opinions. Because it's our show. <laughs> what is that? And from? not yours. Uh. What is that from? Uh. Trixie and Katya. I'm thinking of something else. Oh, well, no, anyways. Okay. Alright, thanks for watching. Thanks. Um, bye.